Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Valdestat's Voice, and I'm your host, Valdestat. And for today's topic, I'm going to be talking about a couple of things. How Super Bowl Sunday was for my area, and Uber Eats. So, let's get started. On Super Bowl Sunday, you got to remember that I'm in a smaller market in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We have one little small city, and as soon as you start going away from the city in two directions, actually three directions, it starts becoming rural, and you have to drive pretty far to get to people's places. If you go east, there's other cities like Eastridge and uh, Fort Oglethorpe and Brainerd and all those other little small cities, but you still have to drive past five miles or up to 25 miles to get to these outlying areas when you go east. So that kind of puts a restriction on us, unlike the larger cities like, you know, uh, Atlanta, Seattle, Dallas, New York, all these, uh, you know, LA, all these big cities that have cities for miles and miles of blocks. And then even as you leave the city, you get run into more cities with more blocks or suburbs and all that good stuff. So you guys have a lot more volume and surface area for those larger markets than I do. So you guys may have had a great Super Bowl Sunday as compared to I did. Mine was kind of just mediocre. Um, I made only about in from 10.30 in the morning to 8.30 at night, 10 hours. I only made on Grubhub about $105 and on Uber Eats, about $30. So I made about $135 total. So not terrible for my area's market standards, but also not great either. Uh, I did not get one Buffalo Wild Wings order. Really, I only got a few KFC orders and just my normal restaurants I normally would get from. So nothing great. Um... So pretty much the point I'm making is, is is that it all depends on the market that you're in. But if I were to do Super Bowl Sunday again, I wouldn't go into high expectations of making over $200 in a day because my market just isn't like that. We don't have the volume of people that you guys probably do in your areas. So Super Bowl Sunday, not great for me. Feels mediocre at best. Um, but, you know... Do what is best for you guys. If your markets are good, work it. Okay, make that money. For me, I have tempered expectations. Now getting on to the Uber Eats end. A lot of you in your markets as of the first of the year, or even before that, you guys had what's called full disclosure information. That means you get information from not only where you have to go to the restaurant, you get pay information, and you get customer information of where they're located at approximately, okay? And, you know, you can basically effectively multi-app. Me in my area, I don't get that. I still have the old style model of I only get to see the restaurant time to either get to it or when the order is ready. That's it. I get no pay information. I don't see customer information. So that will not let me effectively multi-app either because I'm literally taking a shot in the dark if I take a chance on multi-apping with Uber Eats. What kind of drove a nail in the final nail in the coffin, I was talking to my wife yesterday who's always with me when I drive nowadays. So we had a couple of orders. It was kind of slow during some times uh, yesterday on Super Bowl Sunday. And I said, wow, this is unusual, but okay. So we said, well, why don't we try Uber Eats? She hates Uber Eats. I gave it a chance uh, for practically the last time. And I did three Uber Eats while waiting, you know, uh, you know, at different times of the day. One was relatively close, under two miles, which is what I expect from Uber Eats, but two were kind of far away, and I was multi-apping with both apps on at the time, and it sent me out of my normal downtown area, and it put Grubhub's 
deliveries back a little bit. Now, I know what you're saying, Grubhub is not the fastest and you have a little bit of extra wait time and all that. True, but even so, I was still late by about 10 minutes for each of those deliveries because of the far off distances I had to go. And in my opinion, that's unacceptable, okay? I know I know what to expect from what you guys are thinking. If I'm in that situation, you're taking a chance. And if you want to use Uber Eats or multi-apping, that's a chance you're going to have to take. I get that. But at the same time, if Uber Eats is being rolled out in other metropolitan markets with full disclosure, they should do it for everyone. It's not right. It's not fair. They have the ability to do it. They just won't. Maybe it's because it's further distances and we'll cherry pick more because of that. And to be fair, they're right. I would. But as independent contractors, we should be given that right. They don't just not a take it or leave it. What other company outside of the gig app world, like truckers or delivery couriers or whatever, would ever be put into that situation where we have to accept the order before knowing where the customer is or knowing how much we're going to be paid? That's complete BS. Even DoorDash and Grubhub will at least give you an approximation or an exact location of where the customer is with at least pay information. Uber got there, but they're not doing it fully, which is nonsense to all parts of the country. So I made the conscious decision of after going through that experience and putting my stress level up, I was pretty pissed to say it like uh, loosely after work because of it because I shouldn't be have to be put through that so I made the conscious uh, uh, decision along with what my wife says because we are in a market where we have to limit our miles or else we're just going to drive our car into the ground to just stop doing uber eats and I hope someone at uber is listening to this not that they are but I hope someone is that it's not just me and my small market, but there's a lot of people in my area or other small market areas that don't get this information. And we're getting frustrated and we're getting really upset. And a lot of us are going to take a stand. You're going to lose drivers until you actually provide that information that other apps do already. Your pay is not commiserate also to the distance drove, at least in my area. I drew, had to drive eight and a half miles one way and only got a little over $6. That is complete BS. And unless you get a tip, which a lot of times we don't, that's dead miles back. So Uber, I give you my two thumbs down to you. I'm not going to be driving for you guys anymore until you provide information that we need, namely customer location. So that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully you guys in the other areas where if it works for you, keep using it. But for those of us that don't, I would recommend anyone listening to my video that doesn't have the trip information to take a stand and just stop using Uber Eats because it's just not worth it for pay or for information. So everyone, it is a Monday on my day off. I'm not working today, so I'm just pr providing a video just to, you know, tell my experience of what happened to me yesterday and uh, about what I'm doing on Uber Eats. I'm taking a stand. Have a great day for everyone that's working out there. Make your money and hopefully, you know, stay safe out there. Take care all. Bye-bye.